Corey LaJoy and Spire Moon Sports expect to make the playoffs this year. Kyle Busch has a new interesting sponsor. And you can come watch NASCAR for free. What up, y'all? Welcome back to Rolling the Bottom. I'm your host, Zach Moore. Uh, happy to be here. Excited to bring you an episode of Rolling the Bottom. It's a beautiful day. Right now, it's currently Saturday. I'm recording this. Who knows when this will actually be out? Who never? You never know who. Uh, but lots of um, great news that came out. More news, some big news, some fascinating things that came out this week that I look forward to uh, covering today and giving you my takes and thoughts. But also, I want to start off with last night was Hall of Fame ceremonies. Uh, Donnie Allison, Chad Allison, and Jimmy Johnson both got inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. It was really cool. I was not able to watch the ceremony, uh, but I did watch uh, their their speeches. Uh, really interesting. It, it's really cool. They, they kind of talk about a, you know, a career in you know, 10, 15 minutes and how they all were brought up. And it was really interesting uh, hearing their, their stories. And they're both real, well deserving. You know, Chad Knauss, a very deserving. He won seven championships with Jimmy Johnson. You know, definitely, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very, very upset with the fact that Jimmy Johnson did not get, you know, unanimous in the Hall of Fame. I think there was four people that didn't vote that he deserved to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, so that to me really bugs me. And Diane Allison, I don't know much about Diane Allison, but he was a part of that. And there's a fight between Kelly Armour and Diane Allison. They, he was, you know, part of that first race, 19, 1979 Gate 1200, which is, you know, he was considered the, the most important race in NASCAR history, which it is a big race because it kind of sets the tone for what NASCAR was and what NASCAR continues to, to be. I really knew who Diane Allison was. He wasn't really from my era. You know, he raced in the late, 80s, right? Uh, but really cool to hear those kind of stories. Our first topic, so Corey LaJoy, you know, Spire's making all these changes. They bought a charter, and they're going to have Zane Smith, Carson Hosefar, and Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy is going to be the, the veteran guy in that team. He's going to be the leader. I had some interesting stuff. He was on the Series X NASCAR Rio show. He talked about what their expectations and goals are going into this season. The expectations internally between Ryan Sparks and I, I feel like, if we don't make the playoffs, we'll be pretty frustrated. We got so many great additions to our race team. We we move shops. There's four truck teams in there with us. The entire 77 crew with with Luke Lambert leading that team is going to be super strong. You know, we've been more or less operating as a one car team the last three years, and and with this new car, trying to fine tune and refine that baseline is is so important. And for us, only really have one car worth of information to to get better really has stunted our growth. Uh, so to have three teams now, you know, get the track house alliance somewhat with that 71, um, you know, we have great partnership with Hendrick Motorsports on the engine side and pit crew side as well. So we're, we're going to win. Uh, I, like I would be very upset um, and probably frustrated and feel like, you know, internally we probably didn't meet our marks if we didn't win or find ourselves in the playoffs. We have a lot more philosophies in, inside the shop. The culture's different. Uh, the expectations are different. We're going to surprise people. So if they're sleeping on us, keep, let them let them sleep. We'll wake them up. Man, I can listen. To that. I love that line. If those people are sleeping on us, keep sleeping. We'll wake them up. That's just, mm. you know, they they really truly believe they will be disappointed if they did not make the playoffs, and they also would be they expect to win, and that's like wow. Uh, you know, they made the changes. They want to be a team. They want to be competitive. They're not here just to be a happy to be here type team. You know, we'll, we'll run twenty fifth. 30th, maybe we'll crack the top 20 once in a while. They want to be contenders. They got, they're going to be a three-car team. They're going to be a big team, right? And they, I think they have a lot. Of, they have some very young talent. You know, I think Zane Smith, truck series champion. Chris Hosfar, a proven winner. A talented guy. He has some very impressive runs in last year's season with a third-tier tier Chevy team. I think he's good. Still needs to work on his driving up. You know, staying out of trouble, not making bad decisions, not letting his head get involved of him driving that car. But then Corey Joy, he's kind of the main tier guy. He's the veteran. You know, he's bounced around in the old teams. You know, he raced for BK Racing for a little while, but that was a 32 car. Small team, but now he's worked his way up to a, a really good Spire team that's now really putting the resources in. They're really, they want to be contenders, you know. They have Hendrick, Hendrick Motorsports engines. They're going to have good power in the car. They have hired a lot of good people, crew chiefs, management team, ownership. Everyone seems good. You know, they have this new shop now with the old KBM shop. They have this truck team. They have a lot of resources. They're a big team now. 
And I think they expect to perform. I, I don't know where they where they'll get it done, where they're really going to be strongest at. Uh, in the first 10 races, I think we'll see uh, where they where they line up. But I'm excited. And I, I do expect one of their drivers to make the playoffs. But I'm not going to tell you who I think. Stay tuned to my way too early playoff predictions. But all in all, I'm excited. I'm excited for this team. Kyle Busch and RCR sign a massive new contract to be their anchored sponsor, which anchored sponsor, according to Bob Hawkers, is the majority of the races. So this sponsor will sponsor majority of Kyle Busch's races this year. They announced, we're excited to announce the addition of Zone Premium Nicotine Pouches to the RCR partner lineup. Zone will serve as an anchored partner for Kyle Busch in the No. 8 Chevrolet in the NASCAR Cup Series. Massive deal. You know, Zone, uh, nicotine pouches, new sponsor coming into sport. You know, these nicotine pouches are very trendy in today's world. You know, a lot of people like using them. Well, I'm not sure if they're safer or not safer than, you know, using a vape pen. Uh, but this is really, it's kind of funny. You know, Kyle Busch, Toyota team. M&M's, energy drinking dude. Now he's the bourbon drinking, cheddar's eating, nicotine pouch using driver. It's <laughs> it's kind of funny. He's really changed. I'm, I'll, I'll be interested if he's actually, I'm not even sure. He'll, I wonder how he even use these, right? And it's kind of funny. Uh, you know, he was in the NASCAR uh, radio, series of NASCAR radio show, and he's got this, you know, fire suit. It's got the entire logo, and it says this is a t- tobacco use product. It's just kind of funny. Now, according to Kyle Bush's other sponsor, 3 there there's, According to Bob Packers, 3G was not going to be back. But according to Adam Stern from Sports Business Journal, he replied, G is hoping to be back with the RCR racing later this year. Aim changes in the Delta 8 slash THC industry. And Kyle Kush products are set to remain on sale in the interim. You know, they, 3G made a whole big deal on this. They, you know, Kyle Kush rhymes, right? They made a whole line about with his whole gig for 3G. Um, but hopefully they'll be back. You know, I thought they they seemed successful with them. You know, I thought their paint scheme was unbelievable. I love the black and gold trim. It was sick, right? Uh, but this is huge for Kyle Busch. This is a very big sponsorship deal. Now, Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic interviewed Kyle Busch, and he brought up and talked about near the ending of how JGR and his relationship kind of came to an end in the whole drastic, you know, failed attempt to get a new sponsor in for Kyle Busch. An article was the reported sponsor, but it all fell through. So he had some very interesting topics uh, when it came to that whole deal coming apart. Did JGR try hard enough to sell me? Bush said, my answer to that is no. I'm being frank. And it might bite me in the butt. But they put all their eggs in one basket with the Oracle deal. And the way the Oracle deal got introduced to us was really, really weird. Oracle had just signed a contract for $500 million or something with Formula One team Red Bull. So I'm like, no way they're going to do a NASCAR deal. Not a chance. So told the guys, look, you got to look elsewhere. You got to look outside. We got to call everybody else. Instead, they offered me a contract to race there, and they weren't going to have sponsorship on the car. But I didn't feel like that was fair for 15 years that I was there. I didn't want Joe putting his own money into the program. So I decided that it would be better served for me to go somewhere that had a sales team that got sales for RCR drivers, Tyrek and Austin Dillon, and everything else that happened at RCR over the years. I mean, we're still knocking sponsors down. It seems it's bringing them in. To start listening to those comments, it was kind of all we were hearing. Yeah, Oracle was a big deal. I mean, it just kind of fell through. It also seems like maybe Kyle Busch just didn't like the deal, didn't think it was the best suit for him. I don't know. It was kind of weird where he talks about the deal was kind of weird, and there was no way they were going to do the deal because of a NASCAR, you know, a NASCAR deal, because NASCAR deals are expensive. It was, it was probably going mean, to be a $20 million deal, sponsorship deal. So, you know, and I guess maybe Joe Gibbs' style of doing sponsors was diff- is different than what, you know, RCR deal is. You know, RCR, Kyle Busch talks about how he likes the, the way RCR does business compared to what Joe Gibbs was doing, you know, and I guess Joe Gibbs wasn't going to look for sponsors for him and they were just going to pay him and he wasn't going to have any sponsors and, and Joe, he didn't, but he didn't want Joe to pay, be the one paying for him. So it is a interesting way they ended, but I do think this going to RCR was the best thing Kyle Busch has done. I think 
near the end of Joe Gunn's racing tender, it just didn't. He was not producing. He was not winning as much. He wasn't as competitive. He didn't seem as happy. Right. I think this move was better. It was a fresh start, a new beginning. Right. And it proved he won three races. He was competitive. He made it around twelve in the playoffs. He seemed a lot happier. Now it seems like he's also you know, he sold his truck team, which is disappointing. But you know he, he got a big chunk of money for that. I think he. Wants to focus more on racing. He's he stopped his energy drink. So he's really just trying to zone in racing. I think he has a lot of goals and aspirations to continue in in racing. I think RCR was the perfect fit for him. I think also could, he could spend more time with Brexton and help his career up. So they all, everything all worked out for the best for Kyle Busch. I think he made the right decisions. Um, and I think you know he's you know when they talked about that sponsorship was a big deal. Sponsors don't seem like they're a big deal. I believe uh, he's sold out for sponsorship this year, right? The sponsors like Kyle Busch, you know, he's the most recognizable guy in the sport besides Chase Elliott. So I think sponsors like being a part of Kyle Busch. They like what he's doing, and it's it looks like it's all working out. So happy for RCR, happy for Kyle Busch. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in 2024. Last one to get into. Big, maybe one of the most brilliant things I've seen NASCAR do. We heard all the news. No spectators allowed for the LA Coliseum, right? Well, Ben Kenny made a statement saying that the fans – can come in for free. Race fans, we've heard you loud and clear. I am happy to announce that on Saturday, February 3rd at the LA Coliseum, we're gonna be opening our gates free to the public for practice, qualifying, and heat races for NASCAR Mexico Series and the NASCAR Cup Series. That is regardless of if you have a ticket to Sunday. Race 10 about saying, this is the most brilliant move. You're gonna make it up for fans. They got, NASCAR got harassed. They got bullied. They got made fun of for the way they handled this. It didn't. It did look bad. Why are you going to move all this stuff to Saturday and not have fans have the ability to come watch? And instead of charging fans, you say, "Hey, open to the public, anyone. It's for gosh dang free, free guys." The word F R E E, free. You can come watch NASCAR for free. If you're in the Los Angeles area, you should be going to that thing. You got nothing else to do? Come watch some cars. Hear the sounds. Hear the noise. Hear the sound of rubber burning, the power, the excitement. You get to watch a little bit of practice. You get to watch racing. There's so much going on there. You get to watch the Mexico Euro Series, NASCAR Mexico Euro Series, series race. This is awesome. This is the best move. It's a, it's a great way to make up for the way the lack of communication it seemed that this was made in, in, in a bad look for NASCAR. And they made it up by giving a free opportunity to Netflix docuseries coming out on January 30th. And then... A couple days later, got into clash, and there, there's going to be people that are going to watch that, and then who knows? They'll be living, they're living in Los Angeles, somewhere near the Coliseum, and they'll be like, "Oh, I just watched this NASCAR series. It was pretty sick. Oh, I guess to go watch some NASCAR for free. Are you serious? I'm gonna go check this out." And then somehow they'll be hooked, and they're gonna go want to buy a ticket on Sunday and watch the ma- the main event, or they'll be like, "I want to go watch a race now on TV." It's it's perfect, man. This is exciting. This is what NASCAR. It's a great way to make up for the disastrous thing it looked. When, you know, we were hearing that there's going to be no spectators allowed. And, you know, it was all announced on, like, the, you know, this week. So, uh, awesome move for NASCAR. I think this is the most, one of the most brilliant things NASCAR has done. It's awesome. Thanks, guys, for watching today's episode. Appreciate you guys liking, subscribing, commenting, even watching this episode. I just want to make the sport better. I, I'm passionate about the sport. I'm a, I'm a, I love this sport. Ever since I watched it, I've been a fan of it. And now I get this opportunity to hopefully cover it and make good content that people enjoy and they like and they and they, and they respect me as you know a creator. And I don't try to be someone that's trying to act like I know what I'm talking about. I'm not an expert in NASCAR. I'm still learning as a fan, right? And how things work and how the car, how you know aerodynamics work in NASCAR, how the draft works, how tire <laughs> tire rubber works. All these little things I have to do with NASCAR. I'm just I'm still learning as a fan. But I, I, I like this opportunity to be able to share it with you guys and give you my thoughts on some of these opinions. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one.